Hey class, Mr. Mojin here with an example of a calculus problem dealing with looking for the area between two curves. So the unstated question here is to find the uh, exact area of the shaded regions, uh, or shaded region in total, which is subdivided into two parts. So the generator functions here are given in the, uh, in the corner. Now because one is cubic and one is a uh, parabola, it's a little bit uh, easier than maybe some of the examples that you have for your homework. Uh, to figure out which one's which, but in any case, looking at the y-intercepts, and if that fails, looking at the x-intercepts is a good way to figure out which function is which. So if you're not sure what I mean, if I were to, uh, for example, solve this guy for 0, for the x cubed, that would give me, um, let's see, uh, if I factor negative 6, negative x squared minus 6. What I would do is I would have a root of 0 and two roots, uh, positive and negative, of the square root of 6, which is somewhere between... Um, 2 and 3. So and you will notice that the cubic function also happens to have those very roots. So it's just a good rule of thumb. In case you're not sure, uh, use your little algebra skills to figure out which function is which. The main uh, protocol here is to um, think about the upper function minus the lower function, or top minus bottom. So I have two regions here where in this first region, the green, the parabola, is the higher of the two functions, uh, even though it is in the negative region. And in the uh, second region here, the cubic function is the larger of the two functions. So these little representative rectangles sort of allow us to define the height of each one of these infinitely thin rectangles that are then summed together to give us the exact area under the curve. So really this is two problems in one, uh, figuring out the areas of each region and then adding them together. So uh, even though the points of intersection here are probably straightforward to find, it is a good practice uh, if you're ever not sure or if you get into more... Uh, difficult problems in the future, uh, which, uh, depending on when you're watching this, you, you definitely will be. Um, just to review how to find whoops, the points of intersection, let me just set these guys equal to each other. Negative x cubed plus 6x equals negative x squared. So I don't have a, a stylus at the moment. I'm just using my finger, so if some of my letters are a little bit ugly, I apologize. x cubed minus 6x minus x squared. Factor out a, uh, an x, that would give me x squared minus, uh, whoops, x squared minus x, if I put it in descending order, minus 6, and then the patented butt cheek method, apologize to any viewers who aren't in my class, that would be minus 3 and plus 2. So our points of intersection are 0, 3, and negative 2, which, yeah, I mean, we could have guessed, but, you know, the more analytical approach is, uh, is a good way to go sometimes. So we don't actually need that portion for the calculus bit if we, uh, if we do have a graph, but um, I'm just going to get it out of the way here because I have limited room, and I'm just going to cut that. Okay. So uh, what we suspected was the case. So let's find the area of this uh, region that I have marked with the green rectangle. That's going to be the sum of rectangles from negative 2 as a left bound up to 0 as an upper bound, where the top function, remember this is upper minus lower, uh, the top function is the parabola, so that's negative x squared minus the bottom function, which is in this, in this case the cubic function, which is, I'm going to be careful with my parentheses, I'm subtracting the entire bottom function, that's negative x cubed plus 6x. Uh, plus 6x. That's my height of each rectangle, and the width is dx. So simplifying, I have negative 2 to 0, x, negative x squared plus x cubed minus 6x uh, dx. Looks like I'm ready for the reverse power rule. I'm going to go ahead and put this in descending order just for uh, a good practice to have. Let's see, that's going to be 1 third x cubed, and this is going to be negative 3x squared evaluated from negative 2 to 0. So let me just double check that. This thing became that. It looks good. So what you would normally do at this point, uh, I'll go ahead and put just the, the markers and then the actual arithmetic I'll leave uh, in the calculator and I'll show you what I mean. You would plug in the upper bound into all of your x's and then you'd plug in your lower bound into all of your x's and you would subtract. So in the red here I'd have uh, this business, you can probably see where it's going. Minus, that's from the fundamental theorem, 
all the blue value is evaluated. So bear with me a moment. One fourth, negative two to the fourth power, minus a third, negative two to the third power, I think I said there, and minus three times negative two. Now I could sit here and calculate all that, and you're probably falling asleep at this point. What I'm going to do, uh, just to save time, and this is normally okay, especially on the, the homework handout, uh, depending on when you're looking at this. Um, Effectively speaking, this is just arithmetic, right? So the calculator can do this for us. Uh, it is good to, to understand what's happening in the background, but just to save time and make this video a little more interesting, I'm going to go ahead and type in this statement using the uh, numerical integration feature. Big ups to uh, Texas Instruments for including that, although I guess it is a pretty expensive calculator. So uh, anyway, you get uh, five and a third. So 5 and 1 third, if you want, 5.333, something like that. And you can kind of see where those 1 thirds come from, from here. So that's the number of blocks that live in this region right there. That's 5.333. We still have the remaining region, so let's take a look at it. So uh, I forgot what color I used. I think it was maybe orange. Well, it's gone now anyway, so no one knows. Uh, this region here, the upper function is defined by the cubic and the bottom by the parabola. So I already found my bounds of integration. Those are going to be from 0 up to, what was it, 3? Just check the graph. Yep. And my upper bound is the cubic function, negative x cubed plus 6x. And my lower bound is negative x squared. So upper minus a lower is negative x squared. Of course, these become positive. There's my height, and there's my width. So it looks like we're ready to integrate. It's kind of, it's actually not in descending order, but we can do that as we go. Let's see. That's going to be negative 1 fourth x to the fourth plus 1 third x cubed plus 3x squared. Hmm. Plugging in my bounds here. Let me actually pause the video and use the magic of that. So there we have the rest. You can kind of see where I put the zeros here because I kind of knew what those would be. I uh, could go through all that arithmetic, but uh, life is short. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use Math 9 just to see the numerical integration capabilities. And let me go back a couple cycles here. I've got 15.75. So, this region is 15.75, the earlier region was 5 and a third, let me just double check that, yep. So the total region would simply be the sum of these two, so 5 and a third plus 15 and 3 quarters will give me this decimal value, or if you're a big... Not for uh, rational numbers, that's going to be 253 twelfths. Hope this helps.